So today's lesson is going to build on yesterday's lesson. Yesterday was about measures of central tendency. So the mean, median, and mode. So how things, or how your data relates to some middle value, like an average or a median. And then we also talked about the mode, which may or may not have any effect on you. So today's lesson is about standard deviation. I just want you to think about what this word means to you. Deviation. So what does it mean to deviate? Like what if your parents told you that you're deviating from their goals? Yeah, you're going away from it. If you're deviating, this is like, if you just use the word deviate in your everyday language, you are moving away from some standard. So moving away from some measure. Whether it's your parents' expectations, or maybe it's the center line when you're driving. Maybe you're deviating into the other lane. Okay? So to, to deviate means to move away from some measure. Now, when you're talking about data, and you're interested in how, how the data is dispersed, then you're talking about deviation. So we bring up these words here, dispersed. So how is the data spread out? Is all the data close to the middle? Is it close to the average, or is it completely random? Like if we were to measure everybody's age in this room, it would probably range from like 14 to 18, probably. Maybe 15 to 18. Yeah, there's probably no 14-year-olds in here. So f is there anyone that's 15? Is there anyone that's 18? So there you go. Anyways. Anyways. So your data can range from a minimum to a maximum. And that's what this one here is. The range is just your max take away your min. So it's like, you know, what's the difference between the highest value and the lowest value? So in this class, the range for age is quite small because you're all grouped in here pretty much according to your age in a sense. You're all high school kids, pretty much. So like, let's take a look at the temperatures. Like, Let's look at Nanaimo. Let's look at Nanaimo. What's the uh, maximum temperature there for Nanaimo? 18. And like, what's the minimum temperature? 3. So the range is, is not too bad. It's just 18 take away 3, and you get a range of about 15 degrees. Now that works quite nice for, okay, Harley, if you can't not talk while I'm talking, I'm going to move you, so last chance. And for the range for Toronto, it's a little bit different because there's a negative in there, but you guys can do this, I'm certain. The maximum temperature is, and the lowest temperature is, so if you go 23 all the way to 0 and then take on another negative 4, so that's all the way to 27 degrees in a range. So I'll just write that for you. 23 take away negative 4. This is 27. So for temperature for a city, the range is actually a pretty good measurement because it's like, yeah, like if you lived in Toronto, you, like, you could have a, a range of like 27 degrees in the winter. It's bloody cold, and in the summer, it's pretty hot. So you get a big range. And in Nanaimo, I think this is in BC, like if you live near the island, like on Victoria, 
the ocean sort of uh, is a nice uh, temperature, good temperature buffer that that keeps the temperatures relatively the same. Like the winters in Victoria, they're they're quite mild. Like it doesn't often snow and freeze in Victoria, even though it's like, you know, not too different than Edmonton in terms of latitude. Anyways, range is a pretty good measurement, but there is some issues with range. Right here, and that's right here. One disadvantage of range is that it's easily uh, altered by extreme values. Like if all your data is over here, and then you have like one little guy over here, and one really big guy over there, it can really affect what's happening. Okay, so the whole point of showing you the range is to show you how you can talk about how the data is spread out or dispersed. And then they bring up the fact that there's not, it's not the best. So there's this other thing that they talk about on the next page, and this is called the standard deviation. So if you take a stats course at any post-secondary, like McEwen or U of A, something like this, or even Nate, you would definitely have to talk about standard deviation. And standard deviation has a wicked formula. Take a look at that bad boy right there. That thing's nasty, and you're not expected to be able to use that in this course, so you don't have to worry about it. So, so not in curriculum. So that's nice. You don't have to actually do it by hand. You don't have to solve for the standard deviation by hand. But you'll just use your calculator, and then the calculator will tell you what the standard deviation is. You just have to interpret it. Standard deviation has this symbol, sigma. It's kind of like theta, but it just has like the uh, tail at the top. So sigma has a little tail at the top. So cap this one here is capital sigma. This is lowercase sigma. Yeah, it's funny. All right. So what is standard deviation? Standard deviation is a measure that describes variation or spread about your data. So you look at your data. Maybe you collected a whole bunch of information. Maybe it was a survey. And you look at it. You crunch the numbers. And then how much is it spread out is your standard deviation. OK, so you're going to want to highlight this bullet. I'm just going to clear all these because it's getting really weird. It's going to clear all this crap. And what you want to highlight, for a low standard deviation, it's close to the mean. The data is close to the average. Another word for mean is average. So if all, like if the average test mark in our class was 60, and like everybody got like 50 or 70 or 55 or 65, like everybody got that, it would have a really low standard deviation. But if the average was 60 and like a whole bunch of people got 20%, a whole bunch of people got 100%, and it was just spread out everywhere, it would have a high standard deviation. So a high standard deviation means that the data values are scattered further from the average. Okay, so you need to be able to understand that. What does a low standard deviation tell you, and what does a high standard deviation tell you? Like you'll just get a multiple choice question like on that. This is probably a multiple choice question right here. All right, so we don't need this. And this is an example on that formula. We don't need that. So then we go to here. And this is the same stuff as yesterday. This is the same stuff as yesterday. All right, so I'm going to switch to a different mode so that I can use my calculator. All right, so this is what you need to do on your calculator. First thing you want to do, hit second plus. 
second plus takes you to the the memory. If you had like an exam and the teachers ask you to reset your calculator, you would hit seven. Right? You remember this split spot? Second plus. But in this case, all we care about is number four here. Number four says clear all your lists. That way you can just start from fresh. Now you're going to want to hit the stat button. Obviously, we're in statistics, so you hit the stat button. And the very first option, which is nice, you don't have to go searching for anything, you just hit edit. And you want to edit list one and list one only. Now you can type in the data. This is height for basketball players on a basketball team. Once the data is entered, hit stat again. Okay, I'll wait for you to catch up. So f everybody needs to know this. If you're given a question where you have to put data into the lists, you always put it into one list. Even if there's like multiple columns, like on the quiz yesterday, it's all goes in one list. except for the question that's coming after this, which is the standard deviation. Or, pardon me, the frequency. Okay, so I'll show you in the next question when you have to put it in two lists. You only put it in two lists if there's a frequency chart. Alright, so all that's entered. There's only five things, so it's quite easy. Hit stat again. And then you need to go to the calculate uh, tab. So hit over, and it's this first one here, one variable stats. Okay, if you got my calculator, just hit enter again. If you have the newer, nicer calculators, it'll say frequency list underneath. Just leave that one blank for this one. And then you hit enter. So you should have this on your screen. If you don't have that on your screen, put your hand up. Now I can come see you. Yeah, because you have the newer one. Oh, invalid dim. Oh my gosh. These ones are. You have to start over. Anybody else have these issues? Okay. So, from this calculator, you have everything you ever wanted. Okay? So, your average is the X bar. Okay? X bar. So, right here. The mean height, you can put x bar equals 190. And I can't write on the screen because I'm in the wrong mode. So you're just going to have to listen. x bar equals 190. And then the standard deviation, okay, so for question A, I'll, I guess I could write it on the whiteboard, just the vi people on the video won't be able to see this. 190 is your stand is your is your average 190 is your average and then your standard deviation is uh 13.9 Do you guys see how it says like uh it's all a bunch of stuff you don't need So you just need the sigma there's an x next to the sigma but you're just looking for sigma 13.9 Uh, for those of you that were away yesterday, you can also hit the down button and you can get the median. If you're asked for the median, you can go press the down button to get it. And the n value, n equals 5, just tells you that there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 data values. Alright, now we can actually do some thinking. I want you to think, okay, the very next year, all these basketball players, they grew by five centimeters each. Interesting. So this guy becomes 175, 187, 198, 198, and 217. So what would happen to the average height? It would go up. up it would go up. That's pretty much all you need to say. It would go up. Because everybody got taller, so the average will get 
higher. However, how does the standard deviation change? It doesn't because everybody grew. Good. The standard deviation for the new data will be the exact same standard deviation as the old data because everybody grew the same amount. Because standard deviation cares about how much is it spread out from your mean, from your average. So if the average went up, but everybody's values went up the same, the standard deviation wouldn't change. So you can write that here. The average height would go up, but the standard deviation would have no change. You guys feel okay about that? Just the one thing is like after a week goes by and you have to write this test, you might forget these little details, especially about the standard deviation. So write little notes to yourself to remind you. Okay, now this next stuff is the frequency chart. This is where you have to put in two lists. And when you're prompted to do a two list question like this, I will make sure that the word frequency is there for you on the exam. I will, I will tell you frequency. If you see the word frequency, then you can just trigger in your mind two lists. You got to do two lists, L1 and L2. All right. In your calculator, now you go second function plus number four, clear all lists. That way you just, it's way easier to start from scratch. First row is your first list, and the second row is your second list. Now let's read the question. It's a frequency ch table showing the number of hits per game by a baseball player during the course of one month. So in one month, how many games has this person played? How'd you do that so quick? Oh, you put it in the end value already? Okay, so if you total these up, 5 plus 10 plus 7... 15 is 22, they get 23. That's the total games that this person's played. Now, of those games, how many times did this person get no hits? How many games did they get no hits? Yeah, five times. There was five times this baseball player played, struck out every time or walked every time, that, like didn't get the hit. Now, you can see here in 10 of the games, this person got one hit. So what would you say about that? That's probably the mode. Would you agree? That's the most frequently occurring result. See how he got four hits one time? That's hard to do, right? It's like your all-star. It's like you're hitting... You're hitting good, you're having a good day. Like, you hit off the chart. Like, that's rare. That's not too uh, frequently occurring. If it's not too frequently occurring, it's rare. So this is a bit of an outlier, this four-hit game. Is, was there any five-hit games? No. What's the most frequent? One-hit game. So where do you think the average lies? Like, how, like if you were to say, oh, what do you think this guy will hit tomorrow? What would be a good guess for tomorrow? How many hits is this person going to get? Around one, right? It could be slightly less than one or slightly past one, but it's about one, probably. So how could you find the average? All you got to do is type in the first in the list, the second one in the list. And now, if you have my calculator, this TI-83, then you're going to go stat calc, Hit enter on the one variable stats, and then just wait. Be patient. Don't hit anything. If, it, if you hit something, hit it again. 
go one variable stats, like I'll do it one more time. Stat calc enter. Leave it there. Because for the frequency chart, you have to tell the calculator to look at the two lists. How the calculator knows what you're saying is L1 and L2. So it's the second function number one, comma, second function number two. So one variable stats for list one, comma, list two. If you have the newer calculator where it says frequency, just put list two, which is second two, second two. Because the first should say L1, right? It prompts you, the first one's L1. Second one says frequency, put L2. And then you hit enter. And you should see this. The average is just past one. And I want you to think about that for a second. Why is it over one and not under one? Think about the tallies. How many tallies are past one? Four plus three plus one is eight. And there's five. Which one's bigger, eight or five? If you add these up, you get eight. This is just five. So you see how it like uh, it weighs more to the right? It's like shifted to the right. There's more weight on the right side of, of what you think is the average, the mode. That's why the average is past one on the far side, 1.3 or 1.4. And the standard deviation is to the nearest tenth. Make sure you know how to do that for numeric response questions. We got x bar as uh, 1.3 because that 4 wouldn't round it up. And then you got theta here as, uh, or not theta, you got the sigma here as 1.1. Uh, this 8 actually will round it up to 1.1. And remember we talked about the 23 total games? Yeah. You see here n equals 23. n equals 23. Okay, let's go to the next page. Now it's the exact same stuff, but they're giving you the frequency graph. Instead of the chart, like if you were to do this on an Excel spreadsheet, which is pretty common nowadays, especially in the workplace, businesses, education, all types of uh, industry, no matter what the field is, they look at data. You know, how many people are using iPhones? How many people are coming to my store? Eh, stuff like this. So you can do tally charts. Like imagine you were a business owner and you were in the mall and maybe you sell clothing or something and you just walk, you watch the people as they go by. And it's like, didn't come into my store, didn't come into my store, didn't come in, oh, came into my store, <laughs> didn't come into my store. You could do little tally charts like that and collect data, and then you could look at your data. And then you could analyze your data. Maybe more boys come to my store than girls. Older people come to my store than younger people. And you can collect data like that, and then you can analyze it and try to make informed decisions based on your data. That's what a, a lot of the world is, is trying to do these days. All right, so let's take a look at these. Without doing any statistical calculations, let's just talk about the average. So where does the data lie? And remember, this is tally charts, and this is math quizzes. So I guess you could get a 10 out of 10 or a 0 out of 10. Nobody got that. Lots of 3 out of 10s. See how there's lots of 3 out of 10s? How many got 3 out of 10? 6. How many got 4 out of 10? How many got 5 out of 10? Okay, good. You can read a graph. That's good. Now, I want you to think about like how this averages out. Think about this one and this one. What do they kind of do? Good. They kind of canceled each other out. So the bar at 1 and the bar at 5, they kind of cancel each other out. So wh where do you think the average is? Somewhere here, right? Probably somewhere here. Now, is it closer to 2 or closer to 4? How do you know that? That's really good. 
is because this bar is slightly bigger than this bar. So I think the average is, uh, let's go x bar is about, mm, what do you think, 3, I don't know, 3 point, oh who knows, 3 and a half, 3.4, 3.3, I don't know. I just know it's just bigger than 3, around 3, but on the bigger side. What about over here? This one kind of cancels that one, right? And then this one kind of cancels this one. What are you left with? Five. Exactly 5. I bet this x bar is exactly 5. That's just a guess. Now the hard part. This is by far the harder thing to think about. Without even doing any calculations, which one of these tables, graphs, has the higher standard deviation? The right one? The left one? The right one. So you've got to provide me a reason. Why do you think the right one has a higher standard deviation? Because Remember, it's about how spread out the data is from the average. Go for it. He's got a hand up. Left one because there's a higher difference between the highest and the lowest. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good observation. The, mac the range is like 6 to one, so there's a higher range. Whereas here, everybody, oh no, talk about the mark. Think about the mark though, like the seven to three. The high is seven and the low is three, so a range of four. And this is a high of five and a high of one, a low of one, so the range is four. So actually the ranges are the same. Question, go for it. The right one? It deviates more? Yeah, there's more people that got, he's on to it. There's more people that got f uh, values that are far from the mean. Like, if we think our average is in the middle here, look how many people are far from it. Only a little bit. Most of the data is crunched into the, see how it's all like smushed into the middle here? Whereas this one is spread out. Okay, and that's exactly, he's, he's got it. Without doing any calculations, the statistics quiz, compared to the quadratics quiz, has a higher standard deviation. Now, you're not going to be expected to uh, do that for every question. Maybe one multiple choice question like this, where you have to just look at the graphs and without doing any calculations. So you have to ask, how spread out is the data? So that's what you want to write here. This is what you want to do. How spread is the data compared to the average. That's what you want. And if it's quite spread out, if it's quite spread out, then sigma is high. If it's quite spread out. And sigma is low, if it's not spread out. I like to think of it as like, is the data jammed near the middle? Because it's more of a visual test. The graph on the right, it's quite spread flat, spread out. Whereas the frequency chart here, it's kind of pushed and squished into the middle. There's more, there's more near the middle, and it tapers off to the side. It tapers off. And this is, that would look like that, versus something like this. This one's spread evenly, so it's spread out nice. If it's spread out, if it's spread out, sigma high. If it's not, if it's squished in here, sigma, uh, sigma low. All right. So now we can actually do some calculations on that. So this will be for part B. So we'll do part B here, but I'll leave the graphs up. I'm just going to erase the whiteboard here.
Okay, so calculator. First things first, second plus. Number four, clear all lists. Stat edit. Yep, two lists. So list one, and if you think about your x versus your y, x-axis versus y-axis, the first column is always your x. So you're going to want to put in the x values that have tallies. So one, what else? Two, three, four, five. How often did one occur? One occurred only once. Two occurred three times. Three occurred six times. And four occurred four times. And five occurred once. Now, again, look at the data here. Three, six, and four all jam near the middle, and only one and one on the outsides. That's why this one has a low standard deviation. It's all jammed near the middle. All right, so then you got to do the frequency calculation. So second, oh yeah, go stat, calc, enter, L1, L2. So second one, comma, second two, boom. So this one has a standard deviation of one. What did we guess, three and a half? Nah, it's 3.1. We were close, but we knew it was on the far side of 3. And sigma is uh, 1.0. Okay. And we do it again for the other one. Hopefully you're getting used to this now. Second plus number 4, clear all lists. Once the lists are cleared, you have to enter another chart. You have three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, and they're on the wrong side. Three, four, five, six, seven. How many times does three occur? Oh, they all occur three times. Look how spread out that is. It's threes across the board. Threes on the far side, threes, on, threes in the middle. It's all spread out. If it's all spread out, high deviation. If it's spread out, high deviation. All right, so now we can go stat, calc, enter, L1, comma, L2, enter. All right, sigma is 1.4, and x bar is exactly 5, like we said. So you can see the one that's more spread out, larger, right? This standard deviation is larger than that one. Holy smokes. Is there more to this? I think that's it. That's, it. that's all she wrote. Okay, yeah. So you guys can work on the assignment. That's it for the video. Sorry, say that again. <laughs>